step is to cut some maple for the stop fence that will uh, prevent our sled from sliding all the way across the table. We cut our table piece out to be 18 inches by 18 inches and we're going to round the corner so all we're using is just a putty can to give our rounded corner mark and we just go around marking all four corners with our corners marked now we're going over to the scroll saw and we'll just cut out the corners as close as we can to the lines and make them just round enough so that there's no sharp edges this will allow our rubberized T-track to fit and go around that corner smoothly for a cleaner look. Now we just take the pieces on over to the disc sander and round them off nice and smooth. And again, this is just to make a nice smooth cut on it. Now here I used my thinnest table saw blade and I found that it actually wasn't uh, quite thin enough. But I'm cutting the slot for a rubberized T-track that will go around the edge of the whole piece to give it a nice finished look at the end. So we'll come back and see how that looks here in a bit. We laid down our piece which is going to be used for our miter track and using some double sided tape. Stick this to the bottom of our circle cutting jig and this will allow the miter track to stay in place until we can get some screws in it. Using the bandsaw fence we set that at about three inches away from the blade so that way when we place our top for our circle cutting jig on the table it's going to have a three inch space on the left side of the blade and the rest of the table will be on the right side of the blade. The fence also makes sure that the table lines up square uh, with the blade and the fence itself and as you can see here we're actually leaving a little bit out uh, in front of the circle cutting jig to make it easier to place that on there when you're going to set the piece in there and make your first cut our HDPE miter bar pieces already had the holes pre-drilled there so we are using a center drill to just put a couple of starting holes for our screws. Now when you're putting the screws in this you can't go very tight. You can you can snug it down but you don't want to go super tight with them because it will expand that um, HDPE miter bar. It's uh, sort of flexible so if you if you put them in too tight it will be tight in the miter slot. Now it's time to go over to the drill press and make some uh, holes into those maple pieces that we cut earlier. Uh, the screws are going to go parallel to the face of the two and a half inch pieces. And these long screws are going to bolt or screw into the bottom of the circle cutting jig. And I'm going to drill out three holes for three screws here. Once those are finished, then we're going to move on to the face of the maple and make some larger holes with a forester bit. So as you can see, I want to clamp down those pieces to make sure that these drill holes will be parallel to the face. Now drilling this deep uh, requires you to clear out the drill a couple of times as you work your way into the wood. And then I'm going to flip them over onto the back side and finish drilling the holes into there. Now the nice thing about it is it went almost all the way through. That's the full length of my drill bit. But uh, it poked out towards the bottom so that gave me a nice little reference point to drill from the bottom and meet up with the hole again. Now here I'm laying out the face of the maple uh, so that it will accept those strong powerful magnets that we have. I made sure that the Forstner bit was the same size as the magnetic pieces. And then it's going to be drilled the same depth so that the magnetic pieces are flush with the front of that piece of maple. This is going to allow a really strong connection to the metal bar that's on the front of the bandsaw table. Now fortunately, both Larry and myself have the same bandsaw, the Laguna bandsaw. So all of the cuts and measurements that we make for mine are going to fit his exactly. Now it's time to insert the magnets into the face of the maple piece. Uh, the magnets have a screw in the center and that holds down the magnet and that little piece around there which the metal 
cap that surrounds it really gives it the strength, the holding strength. And it's just a simple matter of putting those in there, drilling a little bit of a pilot hole, and then uh, putting your screws in. Notice that we made sure that they fit right in between the other screw holes that we made for attaching it to the actual jig. Okay, so our next step is going to be attaching this maple piece to the bottom of the jig. Now, we clamp it in place with some quick clamps because the piece wants to move around and we can't really drill any pilot holes because as you saw earlier, my length of my drill went through that entire piece there. So we want to clamp it nice and tight in place and then use those three screws themselves to uh, self drill and screw into the bottom of the jig. Now in this case, I think we had uh, either two and three quarter or three inch screws. I'm not really sure. I think the piece itself was two and a half and we ended up using three inch screws to hold that all in place. Now you got to be careful here because if you put too much pressure on the screws themselves they will break off so be cautious of that. Now it's time to do our first cut onto the uh, circle cutting jig. Now the idea here is that we have the stop block in place so it's going to stop where it should and that's going to show us the farthest reach of that blade. Now we made a slight error here by using the three quarter inch blade we should have used the blade that we'd use for circle cutting like a three eighths or a quarter inch blade. Uh, so what that does is it allows that slot to extend a little bit further than what it should uh, as compared to where our miter slot will be and you'll see that in a minute. But we use this point here to set up our miter slot so that it would be dead center to the front of the blade and by using the 3 quarter inch blade instead of the 3 eighths um, now instead of it being dead center it's slightly in front of it a little bit. It won't make that much difference on circle cutting but um, it's just something to think about when you're going to make yours. So I'm going to use my miter rail for my measurement as to how wide the slot should be. And the first thing I want to do is square that up with the edge. And you can see that I use the square here to place that miter slot down. And then I draw on both sides a line on both sides. And this is where I'm going to make my dado cut the same depth as the miter track. So with the circle cutting jig clamped down pretty good, I put a fence on both sides so that now I can run my straight bit down the middle and on both sides and that's going to give me the perfect size miter slot once I'm done. So I have a fence both on top and bottom and then to the closest side as you can see there that's my stop block as the router comes towards us. So cutting out this slot it is rather deep and I wanted to do it in two passes so that uh, I wouldn't put too much wear and tear on the bit. Now I cleaned out the slot and the first thing I want to do is double check to make sure that the width was correct to our miter bar. And after checking that the width was correct, I, I knew that I could now make the second cut with using the same settings. Now if the width was slightly off or not quite wide enough, I could adjust one of the fences in or out to uh, you know make it fit appropriately. But fortunately, it fit in there pretty good and we didn't have to make any adjustments except for the depth. So using the miter bar itself, I would adjust the depth on my router to match that and then make our second cut. Now when I made the second cut I just went in there a little bit into the front of it and then checked it with the miter bar to make sure that it was the correct depth which it was. Then I could finish routering out the rest of the slot. So after cutting our miter bar to the correct length, we wanted to put a tape measure in there to make it easy to make adjustments on the size circle that we want. And because the slot doesn't go all the way up against the blade, we do have to trim off the tape measure a little bit. Now this is, uh, has a sticky side on it, so we made that trim first, and then now we're fiddling to try and get that um, protective film off the back of that sticky side. Once we have that, we slide it in. Now, fortunately, this can slide in um, relatively easy. And when you hold it upside down, it's not touching the bottom, so it's not sticking while you're sliding it in. And then once you have it slid all the way to the front there, you line up the front part of the tape measure. Now, of course, this is the part that we cut a little bit and trimmed off, so we know that once that's set down in there, it's going to be relatively accurate. I mean, it's not going to be 100% accurate, but it's going to be relatively accurate to be in one inch or two inch or three inch away if we put our pin at that point. 
and you can see here that Larry's using the end of a pencil racer uh, to hold that down and then just cutting off or trimming off the excess of the tape measure and so now we have our tape measure in our miter slot now because the miter slot sits quite a ways into that three quarter inch piece I think the miter slot itself is a half inch there's not a lot left on the bottom to really put some screws in so we decided just to use some five minute epoxy we're gonna scrape up the bottom of the miter bar so that that way it has some grouping power and then we go ahead and squeeze out equal amounts of five minute epoxy side by side and we're going to mix that up and then apply it to the slot now we're going to apply it to the bottom of the slot and the sides of the slot now those holes down at the bottom the recessed holes for the screws we're going to let the epoxy ooze out into that a little bit and then use some rubbing alcohol on a rag to wipe it clean so that it's parallel with the bottom of our miter slot and what that's going to do is that's going to create like a little button of epoxy there to help hold that in place and once this is done it's just really really difficult to pry that thing out of there i mean you'd really have to work kind of hard to do that so i think that uh, that ended up working quite well just using the epoxy and nothing else and finally just a couple clamps to hold it in place until everything dries or i should say cures the epoxy cures uh, then we're good to go now the final step is to add our T-Track, uh, rubberized T-Track piece around. And for this I used just the bandy clamps to hold it in place. I ended up using some um, silicon type glue to hold that piece all the way around. Now um, my saw blade was a little bit too thick for this T-Track. Now if you had a thinner saw blade, you could just push it all the way around. I think Larry's... Um, ended up being that thin with the thinner blade that we used at first but uh, this is the glue that they used this uh, ultra cure and that held everything in place really nice now we ended up using this little miter bar rail and we inserted a bolt into it and threaded that into the bottom and then it had this expanded piece there where when you screw down with the allen wrench it's going to lock that miter bar in place and that works quite well it actually expands that aluminum out and locks it in place now all you got to do is just use that pin line it up with whatever size circle you want so if you wanted a two inch circle you'd line it up with the one if you wanted a five inch circle you would line it up with two and a half inches and that's going to give you the proper dimension to the um, curve of the bandsaw blade with the t-track wrapped all the way around it closed up our slot for the bandsaw blade so I just had to redo the slot okay so we have our circle cutting jig ready and um, I'm gonna try it out and see how it works now we just put a piece of wood back here with two strong magnets that lock into here uh, my buddy he put a little piece here to prevent it from flipping up which I may do I'm gonna see how it works first but we have the track that goes in here I think the one mistake that we did do is we cut it with a half inch blade. We really want like a three eighths blade on there for making circles. So we should have cut it with that and got a precise um, center line here. So it's not as quite precise as I'd like it to be, but, but it's pretty good. Uh, we have a sliding piece inside here next to a scale. And so if once we, we take this pen and we put it at whatever we want it to be. So if I wanted a 10 inch bowl, I'd put it at five inches and that's going to give me a 10 inch radius so the first thing i want to do is put a 10 inch radius on this piece here or see how far i can get out there so um, it looks like eight is about the best i can do yes about seven i go seven inches i think so i want to put a seven inch radius on this piece here and i set my center hole here for seven inches and let's see how that crosses everything so that looks pretty good so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna drill out my hole right here and that way i can line it up on my cutting jig and then i can make my circle cut right on this piece of wood so let's get to it <laughs> 
Okay, so I've got my hole drilled in the bottom. I've placed this onto that little peg on the bottom there. And this hole right here, which I don't know if you can see that very well, is gonna go right on this little peg right here. But first I need to adjust this to the correct dimensions. So I want a seven and a half inch um, circle. So I wanna go three and a half, uh, three and three quarters should give me about a seven and a half. So I'm gonna go just a little bit further right there. And I tighten this down and this spreads this piece inside this groove so it doesn't move. Put the piece of wood back on. And you can see how, how solid that is on there with those two rare earth magnets. There we are. Okay. All right, so that feels like it's gonna work pretty good here. So we'll, we'll try that out. Okay, so I probably should have used a different piece of wood rather than this one for my first cut because it was the odd shape, but I wanted to see how well it worked and it actually, worked quite well with one exception, which we'll talk about. So the pin that I have, I think I need to come a little bit higher because it had, it jumped off the first time as I was going around and the circle got smaller, which kind of sucks. But um, for this particular one, I was gonna use resin anyway. So now I have this spiral that I'm gonna have in the wood with the resin. So I. I think I'm going to keep that and see how that looks when I get it done. You know, the worst that could happen is I go smaller. But with this locked down um, solid, so it doesn't move back and forth, um, this really works quite well, I think. Uh, I think the piece that we have here, we need to get a little better piece because when you spread it out, it, it sort of rocks a little bit. And it doesn't, doesn't give as solid of a feel as I'd like. So I, I might come up with a different idea for this right here. But other than that, it worked really good, cut really nice, uh, nice even once it, this didn't move, a nice perfectly sized cut here, which is seven, seven and a half inches, exactly what I want it to be. So I know that this is lined up really good as long as this stays put. So like I said, I might come up with a little bit different thing, maybe have a longer bolt, I think, coming through here, I think will help. And um, I think all of that will work really well with this but uh, so far I'm, I'm really happy with the way this thing came out and it's a nice circle cutting jig um, the piece that you can put on the bottom here to prevent this from popping up i don't know that that's necessary unless you're you know out here and i'm not going to be that far out because um, if i come out to five inch that's a 10 inch bowl six twelve seven's 14 eight is 16. i mean the most that i'll be is right here and that's going to be pretty even on that i don't see that that I don't see that popping up that much. So I think right now I'm just going to leave it the way that it is and uh, make all of my cuts, but I'm really happy. Got a nice circle cutting jig. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Please do like and subscribe. And uh, I'm going to actually grab another piece and try and see if I can do it correctly the second time, which I know I will now that I locked this down completely. Appreciate you staying this long. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.